Hello, everyone. Well, I've talked to both airline staffers and passengers who are really concerned that this mandate is coming right back as far as the mask mandate um, after a Florida federal judge struck it down, saying the CDC broke the law. Well, now Biden's saying his Justice Department is filing an appeal. Uh, but NPR just came out with an article uh, asking why the government moved so slowly to appeal the federal judge's decision if this illness is, is such a dire situation right now, as Dr. Peter Hotez said on, on CNN, uh, he said, good God of all times to take down this mandate. Now is not the time. Okay, so if this is such a dire situation, why has the Biden administration been dragging its feet? NPR is asking this, saying uh, the department still hasn't asked the judge to put a temporary pause on her far-reaching decision, according to NPR. So uh, I'm actually going to bring uh, one of the airline pilots on who is being vo very vocal against the mask mandate. Uh, and he's going to talk about how not only is he vocal against it, but he and nine other pilots are suing the CDC. They're moving full speed ahead with this lawsuit because they do anticipate that the mandate will be coming back. So we're going to hear from him very shortly now before I intro him. Shout out to the sponsor of my coverage, which is the Fighter Flare Flashlight. If you guys saw my coverage of the U.S. southern border when I was covering the migrant surge across the Rio Grande, uh, that flashlight came in very handy. You know what you guys need? A uh, fighter flare flashlight. There we go. It was actually brighter than the malicious flashlights and you could see clear across the Rio Grande to the Mexican side as these migrants were plunging into the water. It also has a compass on the flashlight. So at one point, the militia didn't even know which direction we were heading. Uh, these guys were fantastic, but it got confusing at one point, and my little compass built into the flashlight really came in key. So this thing is great. I highly recommend the Fighter Flare flashlight for self-defense, too. The Fighter Flare flashlight is a tactical, multi-tool self-defense flashlight. It's designed to blind attackers from a distance with a powerful 800 lumens. But get this, there's a reason the Fighter Flare flashlight is highly recommended by military and law enforcement. It's a versatile tool that breaks windows in emergencies, alerts for help with a built-in siren, and charges devices with a built-in power, ba power bank. My fighter flare flashlight is always part of my everyday carry and every prepper survival and survivalist should have one. Imagine how much better protected you would be with it. If you've been looking to go above and beyond in your self-defense, you will love the fighter flare flashlight. Get the fighter flare flashlight for up to 15% off with my promo code IH15. Type in IH15 for the next 24 hours by going to that link down in my description, fighterflareflashlight.com. Click that link. Okay, with that being said, we are gonna talk about this lawsuit against the CDC. I am happy to be joined by Chris Sims, uh, Captain Chris Sims, airline pilot for American Airlines. How are you? Hey, I'm awesome. And I really think I want one of those flashlights. That sounds pretty good, too. <laughs> Just listen no, to it. Oh, yeah, they're amazing. They're amazing. I was liking it. I was liking it right then. I keep discovering new features on the flashlight. At one point, I hit a button and, and police lights started to, and lights and sirens came out of the flashlight. Right. I was like, oh, wow, well, it, does, it does everything. <laughs> we're a gadget, guys, and I like that kind of stuff. <laughs> awesome. So you and nine other airline pilots are suing the CDC and Health, uh, Health and Human Services uh, Biden administration. Um Tell me uh, about the latest in this lawsuit, because obviously the judge just struck struck that mandate down, uh, which would it would feel like your lawsuit is moot. But how do you feel about all this? Well, what's kind of going on? Yes, the judge, you know, the judge in Florida struck down the law that struck down the mask mandate. And that's been great. Um, but that doesn't mean you know it's going to be appealed. And of course, it's kind of I can't believe that they're going to appeal this. But they're going to appeal it, and there's a good chance it'll come back. That 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 somehow the way this government's operating, kind of uh, you know fast and loose, it's probably going to come back. We think, but we want to kill it for good, and so it's kind of what we're trying to do is kill this thing off, make it to where it can't come back. And our lawsuit is uh, uh, there's multiple lawsuits right now. The, the the pilots are in one lawsuit, and we're suing in uh, D.C. District Court, and the uh, 
flight attendants are suing in, a, in another court, and I think they're in Colorado. Uh, but there's much of lawsuits. There's actually, uh, I'm looking here, over 23 lawsuits are, are you know, filed against the uh, federal government, uh, CDC, basically because of the mask and, and forced masking. And, you know, masks are actually medical devices. You know, we keep calling them like these little paper things, but these are medical devices and they are forcing us to put a medical device on our face. And that's kind of what part, in a, in a way, this is part of our argument. You know, you, you, know there, you have no right to be forcing this stuff on us. Uh, you know, it's, it's a violation of our constitutional rights and you can't just have a, have a uh, one of the three letter uh, government agencies just, you know, impose that on everybody. Yeah, it, the CDC kind of set a new precedent in doing something like that, federal mass mandate right. on, uh, on transportation. Public right. And, and so they're, they're trying to, the Biden administration is trying to maintain that new precedent they set right. by, by appealing this judge's decision because what the judge just did is set her own precedent saying, yeah, we're nullifying your precedent. Right. It's unlawful. You can't do this. They're, they're overstepping. They're overreaching. Uh, they shouldn't be able to do this. I mean, and, and really what's sad to me is that the American people have not stood up. You know, we are so constitutionally uh, 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 immature. We have no idea. You know, if they tell us something that we have to do and, hey, it'll be good for you or, hey, this, we just do it. And I get it. We're a little nervous in the beginning. We didn't understand the, the disease or the, 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 C, the uh, COVID thing. And I'm kind of a, I'm a team player for a minute, but it didn't take me very long. And a lot of my friends and other folks that we kind of start figuring out this is something's wrong here. Yeah. Uh, with the whole vaccine and the mask now, it's just on and on. You know, if we cared, here they are, they're making, they want us to all, you know, wear the mask and things on in the transportation system because for safety, but we have an open border where no one is getting checked for anything. They, they're bringing back new diseases or diseases that were defeated long ago. You know, it, it, the lawlessness that's going on all over the place is just, is mind numbing to me. I can't quite figure it all out. I was talking to a JetBlue pilot, and by the way, uh, I, I looked at the list of pilots in this lawsuit you guys are filing against the CDC. Most of the pilots are JetBlue pilots. Right. Uh, yep. there, there's American Airlines, uh, Southwest, and American Eagle, but mostly JetBlue. Anyway, this one JetBlue pilot told me that about 80% of commercial airline pilots are um, conservatives. Is that right? I think that we're all, <clears throat> look, we tend to be I mean, and, and I would be too. I'm a very conservative person. I think that's probably like a 60, 70. It, it's a right leaning or, you know, strongly right leaning. I mean, you know, we have, but, I, but we fly with all kinds of folk, folks. I mean, we tend to be a conservative group. You're correct. Uh, so how is it now that the mass mandate has been rescinded? Um, I'm hearing mixed reviews from, depending on the airport. That, that a lot of passengers are actually still wearing their right. Mask. I think it's this Stockholm. Uh, I, I wrote this on one of our little blogs. It's like the Stockholm syndrome. People are, you know, your your oppressors, you know, or you're, you're, you're you know, they, they've they've been so oppressed for so long. They almost don't know what to do when when suddenly they're not being oppressed. They feel like they have to still wear this mask. And they don't really know why they're really. I, I, I mean, I think they think, well, maybe I'm making someone else feel good, but. Everybody, I, most people need to know the mask does not do anything anyway. Uh, if you look at all the studies, there's over 200 studies before COVID, and they said masks don't work for this kind of stuff. It's you know if you're working on a on a project or over your surgeon, it keeps you from while you're talking spitting into the into the field where you're operating. But other than that, these viruses go straight through this stuff, no problem. And people, uh, you know, people don't wear them correctly. They contaminate them. And then afterwards, they're really a biohazard. And we just toss them in the garbage. This would be, this has all kinds of pathogens on it. You know, but no one's trained on these things. Nobody cares. I mean, it's like, I wear a mask. It's really about obey, obeying the authority and just putting something on your face, whether it works or not. Yeah, yeah, looking at the numbers of cases in, in states that have mask mandates versus not. Uh, the states that had mask mandates, it looked like the cases were a little bit higher, ironically. Mm -hmm. uh, but so, yeah, I'll just tell you, I have flown, I have flown so much during the pandemic. And so I had to wear a lot of masks mm -hmm. and right. 
I just flew for the first time without a mask in, you know, first time in forever. And it was like this naked feeling. It's so funny how, um, habit, you know, we're, we're creatures of habit as humans. Yes. And so it was just like, I feel like I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> you do. I think, and I think that's what's going on. It's like, suddenly you've been released from your prison, but all you've known for two years is your prison. You don't know how to function without your mask. And, and they beat you over the head with it every single day. You hear it. I don't even like to make the PA. In fact, I don't make the PA anymore. Mm. Sure. Please, ladies and gentlemen, this captain, welcome aboard, blah, blah, blah. And then I get down to the part where, by the way, it's federal mask mandate. still, in front, you know, this, yeah, but they have this really one that really bludgeon you with it. I don't do the bludgeoning when I just say, you know, please comply. It'll be nice and helpful for us. I don't want to have a problem. But you're not, um, you're not saying that anymore, right? Uh, I have I, lately. I've not been saying it at all. I've been just skipping it uh, yeah. because I don't want to. I mean, you know, and of course, now you don't have to say it at all anymore. But uh, the company has and all the airlines have a have a have a, uh, a, a speech for us. And it's not very nice. As far as <laughs> I'm I mean, it's it's really harsh about, you know, federal law. And you, you know, you know, you, these are my safety. Uh, my flight attendants are my are my uh, people in the back. Oh, and, my you know, God. So. They write a script. I was wondering who who these people are in, on these loudspeakers who are calling it law because this mandate was never passed. Correct. Law. Correct. Correct. And I'm sitting here like it's not a law, you know. And look, there's there's a lot of subtle law rules in this stuff, and we've been studying it. And nobody else knows it, but I mean, you are allowed to take the mask off to eat, even though they say sometimes you'll hear the flight attendant say, "Pull it down, take a bite, pull it back up." Uh, well, if I do that, ma'am, I have just contaminated my mask with my hand. Can you bring me another one? <laughs> and if everybody yeah. does that, the, the airplane's only got 30 or 40 on there. And you go, hey, I, you, now you want, well, are you telling me I have to put a contaminated mask on my face? You know? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, that might be, yeah, but as long as you don't engage the, the flight attendants or flight crews uh, with abusive language or physical abuse, you really, they can't do much to you. They might write you up, but here's your out. You know, I'm always coming up with, well, several of us are coming up with ways to get out of it. Just say you're having trouble breathing. That is an exemption. Well, I say it's, it's a footnote on the list of things. You know, ma'am, I it says, I you don't have to tell them it, but it's like footnote seven. <clears throat> and ma'am, I'm trying to, I've been hyperventilating because of the mask. I need to get my breathing under, con, under control. And she's not going to tell you when or he, is not going to tell you when your breathing is under control. I'm the one who knows when my breathing is under control. And if you keep yelling at me, I'm going to keep hyperventilating because you're stressing me out. You know, so you could just totally. kind of get away with that. So <laughs> if this mandate does come back, guys, this is a real bullet point from this. That's a bullet point. And that's in there. And I could I could I could look it up. It's in uh, there's there's security directives from the TSA that they handle the airport and there's security directives for the T from the TSA for airlines. And those are footnotes because there's exemptions for job duty, like pilots and flight attendants, but they don't give the flight attendants a mask exemption. There's exemptions for under two. You hear that, you know, you, everybody knows about under two, right? That's an exemption. And there's also exemptions for people with physical disabilities wow. or medical conditions, but we almost never give that one away because you're just not gonna get the fly. That's crazy. You just froze up, are you still there? That's what the airlines kind of will tell you. <clears throat> You're frozen. Oh, you can froze you for a bit, but I see you now. Okay, okay sorry. So I, I've always wondered because, you know, you you pilots are stowed away in this private little front room of the airport airplane. Right. And you sound like you were not a fan of these masks really early on. So were you wearing a mask up No, there? we don't have to wear the mask. Oh, so the pilots- We are using the exemption. The company wants, a, airlines want the, because they know it's not safe. I'm just telling you, this is a safety problem. It's a health problem. And the companies know it's not safe. So we don't, we are using the exemption. The only time we wear the mask that I have, that pilots and, and the team members on your, on your company, we have to wear masks is in front of passengers because they want us, we're trying to show leadership. So when I'm in the airport, which I don't wear a mask in the airport, uh, I'm showing leadership by not wearing the mask. But I, but, but they, but the company says you will wear the mask. It's company policy because we want the passengers to be obedient. That's and that's why, that's and we're under threat of, 
of discipline if we don't do it from the company. That just reminds me of my time at Fox when they they would tell us to stand alone outside on camera, but with a mask on for no reason. You're, you're not surrounded by anyone and you're outdoors. But really? Keep a mask on while you're reporting the news because you want the viewers to be obedient to masks. And you That's need it. the example, even That's though it. the viewers can't really hear or make out what you're saying because right. you have a mask on. Right. But it was all about it was all about programming, and we were we were supposed to be the programmers, and I was like, and we're doing the same. The companies, everybody wants you doing the same thing because it puts pressure on on everybody else to wear the mask, and they were basically training us to be conformant uh, to to conform. This is a conformity experiment going on, and you can see how hard it is to not conform now. Now that the mask mandate's dropping, people are un, are, are uncomfortable not wearing the mask because they want to conform. They want to look like they've been looking probably for the last two years and they're keeping them in fear. You know, as long as they're scared, they will conform. So, and that's what they're wanting. And there's nobody's going to get in trouble though. I tell people when you're in the airport, once you clear security, which I don't even wear it through security, mm -hmm. I can get through there. If you press them hard, I'm banging the table. If you press them, you can get through. Well, and even probably some passengers, but you can't just say, uh, when they say, sir, do you have a mask? You can't say, oh, yes, and put it on. You've got to start making them work a little bit. So that's what I do. I make them, I make them work. Okay, so if this mask mandate does come back, what's your advice to passengers? Oh, it's easy. Look, you guys are free Americans. You're living under a constitution. And what I would do is I, I mean, you know, hey, we want to travel. Um, I would show up, every, the, the, the TSA agent, when you go through there, they should have to say 10,000 times a day, sir, do you have a mask? Ma'am, do you have a mask? And you should just say, no, I don't have a mask. And then make yeah, them- Yeah, that's when they hand you one. <laughs> well, that's fine, but you think they've got 10,000 of them in there? Ooh. Across at the DFW airport, at the at the Love Field airport, at the Los Angeles, 10,000 for each agent. I mean, I mean, just, and then when they hand it to you, uh, put it below your nose or whatever you want to do, and then throw it away when you get to the other side of the security. Throw it away. And then when you get to the gate, walk up to the gate. And when the agent says, sir or ma'am, do you have a mask? Say, uh, no, I do not. And make them provide you with one. Wow. And, and then there, you just toss, you just, I mean, and they're going to get time. And, but bottom line, every passenger needs to make the agent ask you about that question. You need to say no, or say, just say no to them. Make them tell you, you know, and then just make it as hard. We're making it too easy for everybody. You know, we are complying. And let me tell you, once you're through security, and this is what I did at first. I mean, if you're, you're training wheels, going without the mask, have an empty coffee cup with a lid on it. Just walk around like this. And don't even have a mask on your hand. That's the training wheels because people are uncomfortable. Then, as I've do, been doing for the last four or five months, I don't have a coffee cup. I don't have a, it's not hanging on my ear. It's nowhere. I just go up to them and then when they say, sir, do you have a mask? I say no. And sometimes they don't say anything and sometimes they do. But wow. So you've been doing that as a pilot. Right through in uniform. And that's a risk because for pilots, the company is not going to look good at that. They're not going to like that because I'm violating policy. But you know what I'm not doing? I'm not violating a federal law. And the federal law for us is a pilot is that we have a medical license that's covered under the FAA, which is a federal agency. And it's a federal law, how our, our license is written. And I'm trying to conform to that because it says I cannot fly with it if I know or have reason to know anything that will, uh, of any reason, I, I won't meet the medical requirements. So pilots kind of have a, have a little bit of an out, a, a little more solid out. And because it's a federal law, I use exemption three. And exemption three is for job duty, uh, you know, health, uh, you know, if, if, if required by the employer or if it's allowed by federal law. And I'm giving you the really, really condensed version of that. But if it's allowed by federal law, well, federal law is my license and the owner of the license is the pilot. And so that's what we're saying. And so they, that almost every time I get through security with that right there and I'm done, they don't want to challenge. They don't they're not ready for someone to cite law to them. I can tell you that. And that's what the judge did in striking down this mandate was cite the Administrative oh. Procedures Act, which is the Correct. law. Right. So, uh, yeah. In, 
in our federal law, we have something called the Administrative Procedures Act, which the CDC was violating. CDC was breaking the law for these past right. year plus. And so going forward, we can cite that. We can cite the fact that CDC threw out administrative procedure to force us to do something. Correct. Uh, Fascinating times. Yeah, so uh, NPR was uh, breaking this down and saying basically uh, they're wondering, you know, because DOJ, you know, Biden and DOJ are acting like, oh, yeah, we got to we, we, we've got to appeal this and get the mandate back on. But they're also dragging their feet on it. And NPR is theorizing that perhaps the strategy of the Biden administration is to drag this out till it expires till the mandate, you know, the Biden men was yeah. going to allow this to expire March or I'm sorry, May 3rd. Anyway. May 3rd. Yeah. And so if they if they allow it to expire, then the whole the, the whole federal strike down and the battle over it would be moot. And mm -hmm. the hope of the Biden administration would be that the court could actually throw out the whole thing including what the judge in Florida did, because what the judge in Florida did was set this precedent that put right. the CDC back in its place. Biden admin does right. not want the CDC back in its place. So perhaps what the Biden admin is trying right now is to just get this entire thing thrown out, get rid of the federal judge in Florida's precedent, allowing the CDC in the future to have that strong authority again to right. institute such a mandate in the future, which if you really think about this big picture, kind of sheds even more light on, on the Biden admin's real intentions. This is not about safety. If there was such a critical situation right now, they would be fighting hard this second to get the mandate right. back in. Right. Because every moment that people are going into these airplanes without masks, they could be catching an illness. But oh, yeah. it's, not, it's apparently not about health. It's about a strategy to have long-term power is what it's happening. Right. right. So. And you know, by the way, and you know this probably, and your viewers may know, airplanes are well known to be very safe because of the airflow, HEPA filters. We change the air every three minutes. There is, there's way too much airflow in those airplanes. <clears throat> I know it can be windy, but it's fine. <laughs> but I'm just saying, and that's everybody knows that the the, the uh, CEOs of all the airlines have sent that because we want people to feel comfortable, but yet we're still doing all this stuff with a mask that is well known to not do anything. You know, that's what's kind of weird. You know, it's well known the mask is not doing anything. And, then you, and you also would need at least a, probably an N95. And oh, by the way, this is the say another safety thing. You know, we don't know the medical uh, issues of any of our passengers. I have 85 year old people with heart issues, uh, emphysema, uh, you name it. There can be all kinds of things and they're masking up. But when the airplane is up at uh, 39,000 feet, the cabin, and this is for your viewers, they'll, they'll understand this hopefully, the cabin is at 7,500 feet. So you're like 1,500 feet above Denver. Well, there's a lot less air at, at 7,500 feet than there is at sea level. And exactly 25 to 30% less. So now you're blocking your, you're blocking your face, you're breathing your own CO2, you've already got a heart issue maybe going on or some other issues, and now you've just cut off 25% of your oxygen. Wow. That you're, so these are, this is a real thing in the FAA. Nobody decided, they just said, put a mask on. Nobody's looking at this stuff. And now if you depressurize, and I've been in altitude chambers, uh, there's something called the time of useful consciousness. And you know how they say, flight attendants say, remove your paper mask. And then you probably saw this the other day and put the mask over your face. Don't put it over the paper mask on. Make sure you take wow. that off. You know, if you screw that up, you know, no telling, but you've got like 10 seconds to get that thing on if, if a window blows out or something goes quick oh. or you're going to go sleepy time and you're not going to be able to control that. You're just going to, it's going to happen. And uh, some people are not going to do well at that. And of course, you don't want your pilots already starting off with, with having worn masks and things to deadhead for their trip. They're already starting off in a little bit of hypoxic, we'll call it. And you don't want that happen. That's one of the reasons we don't wear masks in the cockpit at all. They don't want us to have those problems. I mean, wow. it's, you know, but they don't tell the people in the back about that problem. They just say wear a mask, and that's that's a that's a safety thing. That's a health. It's a health and safety both. There's two things right there. If your flight attendants all pass out, and they could, well, now you don't have anybody to help you in the back. While and so you know, it's it's going to be a real ugly situation when that happens, and it can happen. 
Wow, that's that's just that's wild. That's fascinating. That you I mean, said. you didn't know that. You don't think about that, though, yeah. do you? Well, yeah. the other day, it's kind of prescient, prescient, uh, prescient. I had a, a cabin. I was losing control of the cabin on a flight the other day. It was going slow, but I was losing control. I had to stop the climb because if I kept climbing, it was just going to keep coming up with us. And so I'm just saying if that happened at 39,000 feet and it happened pretty quick, it could be a big problem. Wow. So I had to stop the climb to stop the cabin from coming up. That's what I did. And, uh, and so we ended up descending back down. So those things happen. Wow. That's crazy. Well, uh, thank you for all your insight and tips yeah. for, for the passengers uh, to kind of take back their power if need be right now, a Florida judge has helped people take back their power, but, <clears throat> right. but keep us updated on your lawsuit. You know, if you guys can win that, sure. that would, that would, um, add to the you know stopping the cdc's power grab in his tracks um as far as this pr these precedents that are being set so yeah keep us updated on that and thank you so much for being you so transparent remember it's we the people the people are going to handle this if we stay if we don't if we say no and we don't obey they're going to not be able to do anything we have got to stand up and it may cost us something it cost our our forefathers something it may have to cost us something well, that's, that is absolutely true. Thank you so much, right. Chris. Um, filing one of the 10 uh, commercial airline pilots filing lawsuit against health and human services and the CDC. All right. All the best to you and you. Uh, safe travels. And we'll talk to you later. We will. Thanks for, thanks for uh, talking with me.